So when we're looking at any uh, absorption or emission experiment, um, they're always governed by a, an uncertainty principle. You may be familiar with the um, position and uh, momentum uncertainty principle from quantum mechanics. Um, that's not the only uncertainty principle that exists in quantum mechanics. Uh, we have one that also applies to energy and time. So the energy time uncertainty principle uh, is greater than or equal to h over 4 pi. Um, this is similar in principle, in similar idea to the you know the fact that we can't know the exact position and the exact momentum of a particle at a given time. You may be familiar with that uncertainty principle. Uh, this is all, this has to do with delta e. So let's define what this is. This is the uncertainty in the energy of a state uh, meaning this also translates to uncertainty in the frequency that it's going to absorb or emit and delta t here is the lifetime of an excited state before it decays to the ground state And this is a fundamental principle uh, related to all quantum objects, all everything in the universe. Uh, and so this provides the narrowest possible line width that we can get and what's what we call the natural line width of a, of a transition. So if delta t, if the lifetime is long, then delta e can be quite small. But the, the shorter the lifetime is for an excited state, the, uh, the bigger the uncertainty of the energy. So if you have excited states that are very, very short-lived, they have very broad line widths in terms of what you observe, the, the different uh, energies that can be observed, uh, because this delta E translates directly into the width of the lines that we see. Um, so for, for gaseous atoms and gas phase atoms, the lifetimes are usually on the order of nanoseconds. So delta T is approximately equal to 10 to the minus nine seconds. So let's go ahead and see how that, uh, what that corresponds to in terms of our delta E values. So if that's true, then delta E is equal to, well, not equal to, but greater than or equal to H over four pi delta T. We're just rearranging the uncertainty principle and then we can plug in specific values for these. So we have Planck's constant here on the top, joules times second, four pi is pi, and then we can put 10 to the minus nine seconds here. All right, and so that gives us something that's on the order of 10 to the minus 25 joules. So, you know, a very small uh, uncertainty in the energy. But what we care about is wavelength. So what about wavelength? Now, as we, we've discussed in class when we were looking at uh, resolution, uh, we can't just directly take di changes in energy or frequency and convert that directly to wavelength, but we can say that a, you know, a difference in energy over the energy will be proportional to the difference in wavelength over the wavelength. All right, so we can, we can use this uh, property to to find our difference in energy here. All right, so we can take our 10 to the minus 25 joules and let's pick a particular wavelength. Let's say we're looking at sodium. Uh, we're going to look at that same transition we were looking at for the temperature stuff. So our delta E is 3.371 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. That's the same value we have from before. Um, and so that corresponds to a delta lambda over lambda. We know that lambda is 589.756 nanometers right so that's what i gave from in the in the previous example so that gives us a value of delta lambda of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4 nanometers so this is if we look at the width of the peak in a uh, sodium atomic absorption or an emission experiment the width of that peak is going to be approximately 2 times 10 to the minus 4 nanometers that's a lot smaller um, of a width than a monochromator can can get as we said Okay, so this is this is a, this is fundamental to all of the peaks that you would observe in an atomic emission experiment or atomic absorption experiment. 
and it even happens with molecules too. It's just often we there are other things that make it broader than this, and we don't really see this this uh, natural broadening. Um, so this is uh, we call this either uh, natural broadening of the lines uh, because right it naturally happens. There's nothing you can do about it. Or lifetime broadening because it's related to the lifetime of the states that you're looking at. And this is a, a fundamental. Um, this is the, the fundamental limit of how narrow your lines can possibly get. Um, and this could be the primary broadening mechanism. In the next couple of videos, we're going to look at there's there are other things in our flame or ICP, you know, um, our atomization source that are also happening that lead to you know the lines being a little bit broader than this. Um, and we'll look at those in the next videos.